Hello and welcome to The Hound How To. I'm your host, Fred Zorn. And here today we're going to be learning how to make the dog rope tub. This is a fantastic tool for engaging our dog. There are four ways to engage our dog. First one is food. We can use dog training treats. We could use a piece of string cheese. We could even use their kibble if we really wanted to. But food can be a very powerful way of getting our dog's attention and keeping it. The second way is affection. Anytime you're petting your dog, giving them attention, making sure that they're looking at you while you're giving them the attention is a great way to make sure that you're keeping that engagement. The third way is to reward with freedom. And I'm gonna go more in depth with this later on in another video. If we can get them paying attention to us more in crate when they're ready to be released, we know that that dog is ready to pay attention to us to help them to solve problems that they're having. That's how engagement can be useful. The fourth and one of my favorite ones is toys or, and more importantly, play. Now, a dog tug can be a very useful tool, absolutely, but it's also essentially a toy. Of course, we want it to be a toy that the dog wants to play with us, not just take off and chew on in the corner, because now we've lost the engagement of the dog and the opportunity to teach them a couple of fun and valuable things. But we're getting way too far into why to play tug. Let's learn how to make tug. First thing you're gonna need is a large crochet hook. You can find many of these types of crochet hooks in your local craft store. However, my brother, the wonderful Max Zorn, actually made a crochet hook for me custom. It's got a very long handle which allows me to have lots of leverage when I'm making these very, very, very tight knots. The next thing I generally use is a dowel which I have sharpened to somewhat of a like knitting needle uh, 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 I want to say this is like a three-quarter inch piece of wood. Uh, okay, next we're going to need a fire maker. Bam, bam, bam. You know I use these in a lot of different things, especially when it comes to sealing off the ends of rope. Fire maker, absolutely essential. But be careful with it, please. Also, we're going to need a sharp pair of scissors. We've got everything I think that we're going to need. But there is one thing that I like to use when I'm doing this project. It's not absolutely essential, but it can be much more comfortable to use just regular garden variety gardening gloves. I like to use the leather ones. They seem a little bit sturdier. This way, when I'm working the knots, I don't have ripped up skin after I'm done with it because you're going to be really rending and tearing at these ropes and it can actually kind of do some damage to your skin. When I tell you this, trust me, I found these to be rather useful when making this. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to place your rope on the floor with the end that you're gonna start with here in your hand. If the end of your rope is not yet sealed, fix it up right now. Blow it out and make a wish. Now that we've gotten that sealed, we're gonna start on our crochet hook. You can see it's actually rather large. This is three quarter inch rope. We're just gonna wrap that bad boy right around so that it makes just a loop around our hook and then gonna create some tension. Now you'll notice I'm not wearing the gloves yet. I don't really need them quite yet. I'm going to need them later. I'm gonna pull that right over the end. So let's see if I can show you that a little closer. So I just take the rope and I wrap it around. And then I take this part of the rope, the other end, and I place it inside of my hook. Then I pass this right over the top of my hook. Good, now I've got my first knot. Okay, next I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna pass it around and I'm gonna create a chain of four stitches. That's two. That's three. And that's four. Good, so now you can see we have one, two, three, four. And then our fifth loop is up here in the hook. 
What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this tail end and we're going to put it through this rather tight hole. Now, this is when we're going to use this dowel to basically open this up, placing it in there, and we're going to turn this, using it as a lever to kind of open the loop up. Now you can see there's a nice area for us to make our way through. Okay. I bring it through one, I bring it through another, I will tighten. And as you can see, we have now gone all the way around. I'm now going to just start working this. Okay, so we've gone all the way around a couple of times, but now my knots are starting to get a lot tighter. As you can see, I'm gonna squeeze this pretty hard and it's actually pretty dense. And that's what we want. We want a really dense, tight knot. And that's what we're getting, which is good. But the problem is, this is gonna to start to wear on your hands. We're gonna put on our gloves at this point. I didn't wear them earlier because I wanted you to be able to see the details and sometimes the gloves will get in the way. Now we're at a point where we can start using the gloves, I think. So you'll notice too like that I'm tightening this for this knot that came before by pulling this back through the other side. And doing that, I get this very tight knot on this side that I can pull through. But that's why I have to use that stick later on because opening that knot for the next one is that much more difficult. Notice that we have this round circular shape in our tug and if you remember from our crocheted leash episode it's basically the same pattern and we're just going to do this all the way down till this piece is about six to seven inches long and then I'm going to show you how to finish the end. Okay, great. So now we're at the point where we can make the loop at the end of our tug. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the size of the handle that I'm going to want eventually on this tug. And it should be large enough that you can fit your hand through it and hold on to the tug snugly at the end. So this, this looks like it's about the right size. What we need to do now is bring this end of the rope to then go through one of these areas. So I'm just gonna choose one of those areas and I'm just gonna basically force a hole through it. And I'm using this dowel and I'm creating a lot of pressure in order to make that happen. There we go, and we're popping through on the other side. I'm just going to try and turn this using it like a lever. Now it's not gonna wanna do that because this is rather tight at this point. So now I'm gonna pull it out. And you see that we've created a rather large area right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the end of the rope and we're going to pass it through there. I want it to go through the entire tug. And it goes all the way through because we've created enough area for it to move through. Now, if I pull this too tight, it's going to shorten my handle. So be careful how much you pull this through, <laughs> like I just did. 
Okay, so now we can start to crochet this back into place. I'm gonna need my hook again. I'm gonna find another loop on the other side, open that up here, just like I did before. Bring this up through. Boom. Then I'm gonna find another one, whichever one seems to be suitable at the time. I think this looks pretty good. Maybe this one. Okay, so it looks kind of funny right now. I totally understand that. This is the last loop, and that's why you, when you pull on the end, it will pull through a little bit. This is where we finally get to use the skizzers. So get your skizzers out, be careful with sharp stuff. And we're going to sever the end. Now we have this big old ugly thing hanging off the end of our rope tug. We're gonna hide it back inside of the tug. You're gonna get at your dowel. You're gonna find a suitable place close to the last knot that we just made to open up some area. I'm going to open up an area just below it. This part, because everything is very tight, can be very difficult. So barely able to get through that, uh, but managed. And we are able to move this through. So I'm gonna pull the dowel all the way through till it's almost at the very end. Then I'm gonna take my end of the rope and I'm just gonna park it right behind it. So as I move through, it's gonna follow. And I'll be able to pull that through as a result. I'm gonna pull this really, really tight. We're gonna cut it as close as we can to the piece and then I'm going to pull it so that this piece falls back in and recedes into the inside of the work. Cut right here, then I'm going to seal it and just when I finished sealing, just when it's just melting, not burning, I'm going to pull this tight till it falls back in. I might even push it with the lighter a little bit and that's not going anywhere. That's definitely stuck in there. Good. So that means it can't pull out even when my dog is pulling on the other end of this tug. Now with this end, you can do somewhat the same thing. Sometimes if you've got extra rope here at the end, you can do what I did on this one and you can just tie another knot and create a secondary handle that you can use in order to hold from one end or the other. Some people like one handle on their tug, some people like two handles on their tug. You know, this again is a way that you can customize your dog tug to fit whatever it is that you want to do. Okay, and that's it. So now the best thing for you to do next is to take this thing outside and play with your dog. Play with it in your living room. Play with them in your yard, at the park. Um, there's lots of videos out there to show you how to play tug, how to the proper ways to play tug. I'm going to show you some of the work that I've done with a dog that I've worked with for a while. It's going to be a different colored tug than this. It's going to be blue, I believe. You've probably heard the old tropes, oh, never play tug with your dog, it'll make them aggressive, blah, blah, blah. We now know that if a dog likes something, we wanna use it to teach them something. If there is a way into engaging our dog, we don't wanna just toss it away as if it were something that we are afraid of. We wanna teach our dog how to pay attention to us regardless of what else is going on. And sometimes the best way to do that is to meet them on their ground and teach them how to focus on us in those moments. Trust, communication, clarity of intent, and fun are the four pillars of dog training. If we have all four of those things in our regimen, we're gonna see success. So, go out there, make sure you're having a good time, have fun with your tug, and don't forget, it's always a beautiful day to take your dog for a walk, no matter what the weather is. Good. Good. So first I'm gonna bathe him a little bit. There we go, and then I'm gonna let him win and grab it. There we go. Whoa, and I'm gonna let him win sometimes too. You always wanna let him win. Nobody wants to play a game you don't occasionally get to win. Hold. Hit. Good, 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 good. Yar. Good job. Good job. And this is the reward. Tug game is the reward. Good job. Yes. Good. And 
And now I'm going to try and get it from him. Sometimes I have to win too. Good. And drop. Drop. Good drop. Very good. There we go. 